we launched the series Your Town a couple of months ago, we learned a lot about the mayors of many beautiful Delmarva towns. And today we are happy to add yet another town to the list. We would like to introduce you to Mayor Robin Christensen of Dover. Mayor, thank you for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Okay, so we're, we're going to pry and, and prod just a little bit, okay? <laughs> we're going to go back a few years to when you were born because you have an interesting story about your name. I do. Um, I was born on September 4th, 1950. Uh, it was a Labor Day, and that was the day that the Philadelphia Phillies uh, captured the, uh, clinched the pennant for their division. Okay. My father has always been, was always a rabid uh, Phillies fan. Yeah. And the winning pitcher that day was Robin Roberts. Oh, yeah. So my dad named me Robin after Robin Roberts. I could play every position on a ball field, but if somebody held a gun on me and told me to throw a ball, across the plate I couldn't thanks dad <laughs> <laughs> and that's you look at that little boy <laughs> my gosh what a good looking fellow good looking young man isn't <laughs> shame he? I didn't hold those looks uh, until I until I'm at my current age now you uh, you moved to uh, Dover when you were 11 yeah where, where, where were you born I, li I was born in Ridley Park Pennsylvania at Taylor mm -hmm. Hospital uh, I spent the first years of my life in a town called Prospect Park and uh, spent most of my summers uh, down in the country, which was in, outside of Dover. And uh, we moved uh, down uh, to the country and uh, been there ever since. So wow. I'm almost uh, close to being a native. Almost, yeah. almost. almost. Just to give you an idea of the, the type of spirit that drives this man, he has been serving a very long time, including 40 years as a, as a firefighter. As a firefighter. Uh, little league coach. Uh, I served uh, 18 years on city council, uh, 11 years as city council president, uh, 41 years as a husband to my lovely wife uh, who just retired after 37 years as a teacher, uh, dad to uh, five children and five grand and grandfather to five grandchildren. Is this the whole family right here? Is that everybody? No. Almost? Uh, uh, missing one. There wouldn't be room for the rest of the folks <laughs> in the audience if they were all here. But uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's uh, politics and, uh, and the other activities I've been involved in throughout my life have always been a family activity. So yeah. they've always been supportive. They've put up with me running out of the house uh, all hours of the, of the day and uh, long meetings. As a matter of fact, uh, when our children were younger, a lot of times juggling babysitters, they would come to the council meetings and they would sleep on the floor Aww. in the council chamber. So it's, it's always been a family operation. And wow. My son's the president of the Capitol School Board now, so uh, everybody thinks it's a power grab, but it uh -oh. is it's just <laughs> a continuation of public <laughs> service. And another uh, big member of your family is your dog. Yes, my dog, Bailey. Uh, Bailey uh, owns us. We don't <laughs> own Bailey. For years and for years and years and years, we were not uh, because I ha developed an allergy to uh, pets. We weren't allowed to have a pet. And every time my children would ask for uh, a dog, they would get another brother or sister. So uh, <laughs> finally, about seven years ago, uh, we were at a Christmas party up the street, and uh, uh, they handed me this little fur ball, and it was Bailey. And I said, you know, we can't. Uh, have Bailey and they said oh please and I said well at the time they wanted an Xbox I think it was and I said either Xbox or Bailey and they said we want Bailey well they got both Aww. but uh, so Bailey's been around she's in charge uh, uh, whenever I walk out of the house I always let her I, Bailey you're in charge till I get back and, uh, <laughs> and believe it or not uh, as anybody will attest to you Bailey is the ruler of the domain at the, on Carroll Street in Dover is oh in charge. My she's large and in charge. Okay. She's only seven and a half pounds, but she's <laughs> she's still large. <laughs> yes, she's in charge. So our understanding is that uh, next to your family, next to Bailey, Dover holds a place in your heart. Why? What? What about the town excites you so much? Well, um, for one thing, uh, it, it's just a great place to be. Uh, it's uh, capital of the first state. In the uh, which started the United States, and as I told you, um, two blocks from where my office is is a plaque that's uh, dedicated to the, the signers and ratifiers of the Constitution, and I go down there every now and then for inspiration, touch that plaque, get a little bit of an electric spark because it's such a special place. I look left, right, and straight ahead, and the United States stretches out, the great country that it is in, in the world, probably in history stretches out from that very spot where I stand. How about that? Wow. I'm, I'm, 
and I'm the mayor. And so you're the mayor. It's pretty wow. cool. That's awesome. Okay, so um, there's one question we ask every mayor we bring in here, and we say it's not about the politics, but we do have to ask, what keeps you up at night? What mayor? keeps me up at night is, uh, first and foremost, is the public safety of all the citizens of the city of Dover. And uh, I, I look at it from two veins. First off, that's my responsibility that every pl everyone in the city has a, a safe place to uh, bring up their families and, and uh, live, work, and play in Dover. Uh, and it's also an economic development tool. If Dover's a safe community and it's perceived from the outside world that it's a good place to bring up your families and, and do business, we're going to create the jobs that our citizens need, not just for today, uh, but for tomorrow and one of the things that I work on every day is job retention but also seeking out new employment but primary job is public safety making sure 24 hours seven days a week 365 days a year that falls I take that personally and that's my responsibility yeah. and Dover has a birthday coming up yes sir we do now everyone will see that our city flag says 1683 on it yeah mm -hmm. Uh, it's a little bit of a misnomer. I've gotten a couple rather heated discussions, as I am known to do, uh, discussing with people that 1683 was the year that James II ceded to William Penn the permission to have the state of Pennsylvania in the three lower counties, of which Dover was the county seat for St. Jones, which became Kent County. They laid it out in 1683, but the first, the, the city of Dover didn't actually, wasn't actually begun to be built until 1717 because it took our planning and inspections department that long to approve all the permits to do so. And, and our city plan <laughs> takes offense. <laughs> uh, he just said that on TV. I know. <laughs> so 20, 2017 is our uh, 300th birthday. Uh, we are planning on having a lot of whiz-bang things to go on because I won't be here for the 300 and uh, 50th birthday, <laughs> I, I would like to be to see how this all turns out. <laughs> so we're going to try to have a heck of a celebration, uh, incorporating all aspects of the community, uh, all every all, all the uh, neighborhoods and different things like that. Uh, we're fortunate that Dover Air Force Base is going to have an air show. I'm going to be oh, able to nice. take credit for that when the planes fly over and they break out windows when they're flying over but through <laughs> the sonic booms. But it would be something that, that people will remember for years to come that, you know, we the people in 2017 uh, had a party. Uh, had a party. We have you have one of your guests who's an integral part uh, in another part of one of the celebrations. Can I say? Can I mention that? <laughs> they're they're going to have a the Golden Age of Jazz Festival at, uh, okay. through the state in the Johnson Victrola Museum because if it weren't for Victrolas, people wouldn't hear the music that we hear today because it was a natural evolution. So we are going to have really terrific things. We're going to have fireworks if the weather cooperates several times throughout the year. And it's just going to be one heck of a, a big party. Okay, right. Mayor, I just want to I just want to break in on you and tell you what you've done so far has been terrific. Thank you for sharing. Well, thank you for this has been for having me and giving me the opportunity to talk about well, something that's really meaningful to my to me personally, uh, along with my family. And but we're not and, done yet. Yeah, no. this this no. was the easy part. This well, is the easy part. Yeah. yeah. What What are you doing? Well, you know. I looked at Jake Day when he was here and uh, Brian Shu when they were here and they didn't do one thing that I really like to do and I like to give people uh, mementos of the city of Dover. So here's your official city oh of Dover. Oh my goodness. Goodness. Thank you so Mayor, much. Thank you. And that is so nice. Here is the city of Dover's uh, 90th uh, birthday coin for the Dover Police Department last year. They turned 90 years old serving the community and doing an outstanding job. Mayor, thank you very and much. In honor of the Olympics, and I know that you guys didn't participate in any Olympic events other than cornhole. <laughs> <laughs> and so far, you haven't done too well. So okay, all here's right. official City of Dover gold coin. So you have won some type of gold. Oh thank my you goodness, so look much, at Mayor. you. Okay, here's the deal. Mayor, thank you. We're heading outside to yeah. the cornhole boards. We have a few more <laughs> questions we'll ask you during a game of cornhole confessions. Mm -hmm. And a little later on, Native American history, right here on Delmarva. You're going to find out why September is an exciting month to remember and learn about the people who first walked this land that we call home. Delmarva Live, we'll be right back. <laughs>